Good evening, everybody. A bienvenue ce soir at, uh, to the Rugby Canada's webinar series presented by DHL. Thank you to DHL for helping us put this on. Tonight we have Henry Paul, entraîneur en chef de l'équipe masculine de l'équipe à sept. So our sevens national team men's coach. Don't worry, we're not doing French all night. I just wanted to make sure we got a little plug in there. Uh, but if you do have a question in French, please feel free to, to fire that in here. Uh, so thanks everyone for joining us. Just so that you um, know how this works, there is a control panel that you have a questions box in. So please feel free to fire some questions in there and then I will help work with uh, Henry here to make sure we can moderate uh, some questions. He's got a ton of content. It's going to be a fantastic hour we're going to spend together. And I'm just going to throw it right over to you, Henry, to get us kicked off, mate. Yeah, thanks very much, Nathan. Um, yeah, I mean, hi, everyone. Uh, welcome to the webinar. Um, hope everyone in this time, obviously, um, it's, it's a tough time for everyone. Um, I hope everyone's uh, families, friends are safe and well. Um, the webinar uh, will start. I can get my screen up. Hopefully everyone now sees the principles of play, the principles of attack, um, a little brief outline, kind of our timings. Uh, Nathan's the boss on this, so uh, he'll be able to uh, keep me up to speed, maybe slow me down. Um, if anyone has an issue, um, please write into the box, Nathan will uh, if anything, I'm probably going to have to speed you up, Henry, but we'll we'll work together on this. We'll get through it. It'll be fun. Brilliant. Okay. Well, I'll just start off really quickly about who I am. Um, you know, obviously, I, I played um, both codes of rugby. Uh, of rugby. Um, started off in rugby league, uh, really professionally in the UK, uh, with a number of clubs. Played for New Zealand in rugby league. And then when uh, rugby union went professional, I, I switched over to rugby union. Wanted to try my hand. Uh, challenge myself, um, and because of my my heritage, because of my background, I also uh, was able to represent England um, at 15s and 7s. So really briefly there, and a, and a couple of snapshots. Um, really enjoyed, loved my time, loved the game, passionate about the game. Um, that brings me quickly into my you know coaching journey. Um, it, it started obviously through my playing career, um, way back in New Zealand uh, when I was uh, sort of a young a young lad. My mum was the guest steward of, of the rugby club, and uh, I got to coach the minis as a, as a kid. Uh, I loved that. Went into went into teaching actually. Uh, did a year to be uh, to be a teacher, but that was way too hard. So I uh, transitioned and, and tried my hand at, at playing rugby. Uh, I was lucky enough to get a professional contract, and I was away on my uh, sort of sporting journey. Um, but you know, over my time uh, since I've been coaching now since 2010. Uh, professionally, uh, you know, I was lucky enough to be part of the uh, Russian squad during the 2011 uh, World Cup and part of their ENC competition. I had the men's sevens team for Russia on the uh, World Series. I've coached women's rugby with India, uh, a bit of sevens there, and and I had a, a couple of years of, as a director of rugby at a school. Um, so I've kind of coached all the age groups, um, and men's and women's. And obviously, recently, uh, you know, I've been really lucky enough to be part of the the squad that uh, and, and the series that you know won the Rip Charge to get the team into the uh, 2019 World Cup. And then, obviously, with the Sevens boys, we we did a job and qualified for the uh, 2020 Olympics. And obviously, it's been pushed back to 2021. So, um, yeah, just a brief uh, brief outline. Is that good, Nate? Can I move on? Looks great, buddy. So, you know, yeah, like I, I wanted to start this um, this webinar really um, asking a couple of questions um, from you guys out there that are listening. So please um, have a watch of this video. Uh, I want you to let me know which try, there's about six tries on here, which, which try do you think is your favorite? It's a bit of a question, I'll throw this out to you. Okay, let's see if we can get this started. So we've got a first try coming up. Hopefully the there's not much lag. Scrum play out the back, out the back, blinking, try in the corner. 
see some nice decoy runners, players coming from depth. A well worked try. Try B. A little bit more off the cuff. On the back, through the legs. Try in the corner. Fabulous try. Try C. Um, bit of a one off. Haven't seen many of these. 15 men in the line out. Down and drive. And over. I'm sure that had everyone in Wales up in arms. <laughs> Try D. Good push from the pack. Keep it rumbling. And over they go. Eloquins. Unable to do anything. Try E. Uh, this is the British and Irish Lions. It's the All Blacks. Deep kick. Looks like they're in trouble and they kind of run themselves out. That's counter attack try. Good interlinking play. Good support. Yeah, nice, nice length of the field try there. And another set piece try here. All Blacks, and this is obviously 2011 World Cup. Something no one really seen, and All Blacks pulled out at the big scheme of the of the tournament. You see that from different angles. All looks class. So yeah, please, um, please write in the comments um, what what you think was your favourite try. Um, out of those six, uh, give so, me, give King, Kingsley, there's there's obviously quite a few uh, responses coming in. Uh, sorry, Kingsley. Sorry, sorry, Henry. Um, there's quite a few responses coming in. Uh, one of the requests also, mate, was if you don't mind keeping the slide deck on the full screen. I guess um, it just helps that clarity. I know you and I went through. You know, it it might slow things down with some of the words coming down, but I think. Let's try and maybe work through it if you don't mind, and we'll just keep the slide deck full screen. Is that all right? Yeah, we can try that. Obviously, the transitions will, will might yeah. get in the way, but yeah, we'll try it. Uh, okay, sounds great. Screen. Um, and then, mate, as for the responses, there's a lot of responses for A, um, and then a lot for E as well. And um, <laughs> Kevin, uh, uh, one of our coaches out of Quebec City, says all of them except for F, mostly because he's French and didn't like the fact that uh, the French got scored on in that game. <laughs> um, but then someone who did like F said that they loved it because they're an ex-prop. So I guess you got the whole whole range. But A and E seem to be taking taking the cake at the moment. Yeah, I think that's and for me that's um, it leads in really well into. You know, uh, what I like, you know, uh, everyone has their probably their favorite. Um, why, you know, uh, some of the, I think the tries are, um, some of the feedback I've had before, you know, some people like the decoy, some people like the power aspect, the counter attack aspect, the surprise, planning, manipulation. Um, some of the purists that just love that, that sort of battle between forwards. So, um, and, you know, and that's, that's part of the reason why we sort of had that primer on there was to, you know, think about um, what you like and, if we're looking and we're talking about it from a coaching aspect, um, are some of the things that you like, um, are they put onto the players uh, in terms of emotion and... We'll go back to that. Yeah. So we go back to um, things that you like and as a coach, um, are you impressing those, um, uh, blueprinting those, those emotions and the things that you like in, in your coaching or you, what you like in your game onto your players? Um, and as players, do you have a, a type of game that you want to play and that kind of conflicts with your coach? So uh, I just want people to be aware, you know, we have our favourites and that's great, um, but we all have different favourites. And I think that's the thing that we need to think about going forward and especially, you know, coaching for a long time. You know, the guy next to me, even the guy that I played with, you know, they have a different way they maybe want to play. Um, and, and that's great. Um, but does it conflict during a game and does it conflict during a season? Does it conflict during a, you know, uh, the process of what we're trying to do here now? Um, so we'll take that into um, what hey, I think leads in well. Henry, 
just before you move on to the next piece, there was a great question that just came in about which one was your favorite? You never told us which one was your favorite try there. Uh, my favorite was all of them because I, I just love the, 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 the process of scoring tries. I love points. So, um, you know, as a coach, if I'm watching my scrum dominate, great. If I'm watching that set piece play that I've put together on the training path, come together on the field, great. So, from, I'm really honest, I'd say B because I love the UA and uh, through the legs over the top yeah, yeah. of that. Um, I, lo I love that when it comes off. I don't love it so much as a as a coach when it doesn't. Yeah, fair, fair play. All right, sorry, mate. Keep going. So yeah, so really quickly, you know, um, looking at this from a coaching aspect, you know, why, why, are you, why are we coaching? What, what's the reason? I always start with that because I think for me that's really important. And um, you know, when we're looking at you know, different age groups that I've coached and um, and men's and women's, you know, if you start with the why, uh, you can probably get to your end goal. Um, with kids, fun, let's play, emerging talent, development, you know, let's work on a few things that we've, we've picked out for you. And then when it's performance or elite, you know, we're really looking to go and win. So we want to be really efficient um, and really accurate. So always, always think, think about, you know, it's a discussion point. Think about why you're doing what you're doing. And yeah, for me, you know, the attack principles, why, why we're here, it's cool points for me. Um, tries, put yourself in position to get a penalty and, and go for goals. Um, and the same thing about drop, you know, drop kicks. Um, you know, we've had some famous games in the past where points, you know, World Cup was won with five drop kicks. Uh, and semi-finals, quarter-finals have been lost with teams have attacked one way and, and missed maybe an opportunity another way. So, you know, always think of it again, think of why and what's the goal. You know, are you looking to win the game or are you just looking to enjoy the game? And then, yeah, sort of how, you know, I go from why and then why you want to win and why you want to score points to how can you score points. So I always think about profiling my team. Uh, you know, I've got a team of guys that are you know, big and strong. Um, so I profile my team, big and strong. Are they, are they quick? So maybe that's how I look at the uh, principles now. And I think, okay, I profile my team. I'm going to play this way with the principles. Um, or, or I'll look at the opposition, I'll profile them, and I'll think, oh, okay, they're maybe not so not so strong in their, their scrum or their line-out. Maybe I'll, start, I'll work more on um, catch and drive, look at them more. Um, so things like that. Think about how. Uh, yeah, and then I'll move on to, this, so there'll be some common language and some themes that, that I will use, and hopefully we can get on the same page, looking at attack zones. Um, I mean, some people are different. Some people might look at it as a three zone. I kind of look at it as four, you know, obviously trying to get out of your red zone into orange, uh, yellow, uh, working up field into green and then trying to score. So if you have a look at it like that, you know, you can work through those stages of the field um, and then obviously trying to get over the, the whitewash and try and score. Or you can be lucky enough like the British and Irish Lions there where they counter-attacked, you know, and in one play they went uh, full length of the field. Um, and then I'll also talk about the attack channels, you know, look, working from left to right, if you're attacking upfield, um, some, you know, in, in my career, they had different names. Um, talked about the lane on the left and the M1 in the middle, um, and then the road on the right. And you can come up with your own, your own names. That's, that's a great thing about coaching and, you know, innovating and bringing your own, um, your own look to it, your own feel. You know, and, and attacking, you know, obviously through those channels, you can go straight away, left to right. Your back, back line or hands. Um, you can work across the field in pods, or you can go back and forth like a piston type of thing. So there's a lot of a lot of different ways to um, to get the uh, the result. So just um, the way I think I'll I'll talk about this. Um, I'm going to talk about big terms in terms of the principles, the broad pitches, um, but then I will dive into a bit of detail um, on a couple of the principles. So uh, we're not really going to get all this, you know, from here I'm going to do a three, a one, three, three, one set up in my system, or this is going to be, you know, a toolbox of attacking moves from this line out of scrum. I will look at the big picture of, of the attacking principles that I feel are relevant, and then I will dive in um, and use some detail. And I'm going to use uh, as my case study for this uh, webinar is the England versus New Zealand semi-final from the 2019 Rugby World Cup, and I think it's still fresh in everyone's mind. 
Um, and I think we, you know, we can get some uh, some good links to you know the principles and and, and how it looks and, and um, how it plays out. Um, so yeah, then we start off, you know, game you know, game position, contest position. I think when you have the ball, you don't really want it to be a contest as much as possible. Um, if you've got the ball on a line out, or you, you know, start in a platform, line out platform, you know, you want to try and work your systems, uh, your strategy, so that it's the least amount of contest as possible. You want to gain the position, right? Um, go forward. Um, once you've got position, let's let's get forward, try and get towards that try line. Uh, we work in support numbers. Um, if we do get tackled or there's you know, stop and play, we have continuity. Um, we are then applying pressure. And eventually, you know, we score. So, excuse me for the transitions. Uh, some of them uh, aren't set up exactly as I want, but I think you get the gist. Um, and then, yeah, also we'll go through a quick video. Um, I think it sums up a lot of the uh, those principles in, in one sort of uh, clip. Uh, so, if we have a look at this starting position, obviously principles of play, looking at attack, and it's starting with a set piece uh, line out that England have. Obviously, New Zealand don't contest, so they, they England gain possession pretty easily. I think New Zealand are looking at defending, uh, get some go forward from Mai um, and then some support from a couple of guys. Speed it up a little bit because Curry comes around the corner. Now we have a look at the penetration from um, Daly and some support now. So we've looked at the go forward. Daly's gone forward. He's found, he found some support. Now they've got some continuity because there's been a tackle. Um, England will be able to reload and get some more go forward. Really putting New Zealand under pressure. Courtney Laws carries with an offload, with another offload, more pressure, more go forward. Quick, quick recycle, more go forward and support. Apply pressure, apply more pressure. Tool only sees it quickly and there's a try. So, so yeah, really quickly, it kind of sums up really all the principles, kind of one clip, uh, really, really, really powerful. Um, and I think what I really kind of want to emphasize is that, you know, a lot of these, Principles, they all they're all interlinked. They all overlap. Uh, they're all important uh, pieces of the puzzle. Um, and so let's go through a few of them now. Um, you know, I think think you know when we look at our attack principle pyramid, um, I think gaining position is the key. Do we want to go forward? Do we want to score? Generally, you, we, of course, we do score tries in defence. We can turn someone over on their try line. But when we're looking at attack, you know, really we want to gain position. Um, and, and obviously, we can contest position if it's not our lineup. We can work on strategies to go up and, and put real pressure and, and cause an error from the opposition. But once we do have that ball, you know, going forward with support, keeping the ball uh, continually in our position, applying pressure to score is, you know, you know, for me, that's the goal. We want to manipulate the defense. We've got that New Zealand defense here in the picture in the middle of the, of the screen. And that's, you know, that's a, a black wall by New Zealand. How are England going to break that? You know, using those principles on the on the left there, and obviously, you know, our goal is to score points. So, are we going for time, mate? We're actually pretty good, mate. We're actually pretty good. Yep. Okay, so I'll, we'll get right into the game position, contest position. Um, look at our principle. Excuse me. So, game position. Uh, you look at the ways we can, right? So restart. We'll look at our line out. Look at our scrum. Some set piece. Uh, I and mean, obviously there's kick strategy. We'll get the ball back if we put the team under pressure. Uh, and then what's our strategies and policies once we receive the ball from a kick? And obviously if a team turns the ball over, you know, what's our policy once we've got the ball quickly? So with, with gaining position, what can we do with it? Um, and I'll, I'll go through this video really quickly. Uh, we're going to look at, at those forms of, um, of gaining position. Here in New Zealand, uh, Receiving a kick against England. Um, England have England have split the field, so they've gone six and five. A few guys floating in the middle. 
that can um, break break out, and they can go left and right depending on uh, what the call is and the communication from the kicker to the team. Obviously, New Zealand, uh, in response to their setup, have split their pods. So if England kick to the right, there's a pod there. They kick down the middle, there's a pod there. They kick down the left, there's a pod there, and then there's some singles behind. So we'll look at the kickoff. England obviously gone left high. Johnny May's chasing. You can see an England player out in front. But he's kicked it probably a little bit too deep. Whitelock's got it. They set the ball up, and then Aaron Smith puts the ball downfield. And is it a chance for England to gain possession, or so it's, it's out on the it's out on the floor to line out? Um, if we have a look at some of the the key factors around this kickoff, and this is where I'll break down into a bit of detail. It happened so quickly in the game. There's so there's a few. There's it's been on the score, but there's there's quite a few of these moments, um, and everyone's got a role to play. And this is one of the important things that we, you know, obviously we're trying to impress and um, reinforce the good habits and our and our guys that we're coaching at any level. Um, you know, we're looking at Whitelock. You know, he's got his. Can we go into a little bit more detail in a second? So we've got those players around. You know, they've they've all got roles and jobs to do. Right, they all know their roles and their jobs. La La La, Moody, Vitalik. Right? For the first instance, it's, it's Whitelock's job. He's looking to catch, right? So he's got his eyes on the ball. You know, key fu fundamental things, which, you know, the All Blacks and you know, England do, you know, all those real simple things they do really well. Eyes on the ball, hands up, bringing that ball into his chest and his body. Um, and then we've got the people around Whitelock that are also doing their jobs and their roles. Play it on a little bit further. You look at La La La, right? So his job would be there in case he need, in case Johnny Mays come jumping over the top. La 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 can lift, pit Whitelock up. He's got a job. He's scanning. Where's my man? Whitelock's obviously called him off. He doesn't have to lift him up because Whitelock's going to jump on his own, get the ball. But now La La La's got another job straight away. Sends a scanning. Now I've got to protect my man. We look at other people around that area. Vitalik coming around, scanning. Where's the threat to the ball? You know, we want to have safe ball for Aaron Smith to kick. I've got a job to do. Moody's got a job as number one. So you can see in this, in this scene, Curry. It happens really quickly, but Curry comes in. He's on the ball quickly before La 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 can, can block him out or box him out. May has gone past the ball, so he's not really a threat. But Brody Vitalik has seen that threat come around in the next... Next screen you see, Retallick has cleared um, Curry straight off the way. Aaron Smith now can come in there. You've got La 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 and Moody in position. Pillars trying to protect the ball. Uh, I think Atoje has a little bite uh, at the breakdown, but it's over. It's blocked off. It's safe. Aaron Smith has a platform, kicks the ball downfield. Real quickly, we'll go on to another restart. But different this time because New Zealand obviously is 7 0 down there chasing. They put the ball a little bit shorter. Reed comes in to have a chase. Uh, but Courtney Laws does a good job. And then the other players, yeah, the other players around um, Courtney Laws, they've got their roles clear them out, clear the threat, produce a platform for now, Youngs to, to kick because that's part of their strategy. Youngs kick. Gaining possession for New Zealand, and there it is. Not a great chase, or a bit of miscommunication. Now New Zealand had the ball. So it's a bad battle, constant battle of um, gaining possession. Put this one on because it, it shows, you know, the contest of the restart now, how New Zealand have set up. Um, they've gone into their, their setup, split, split set up, men either side of the field. England have counted a bit of chess here. They've got their own um, protections in place. But in this instance, Ken Reed is able to get up. So England have put a pod up, not in the right spot. Reed's able to get there, but real switched on play from, um, from Curry. New Zealand have not boxed him out. He's able to mop up the ball, produce quick ball for England. And England can play, or in this instance, they can. It's just they're always looking at that constant battle. 
position, contest position, position, contest position. A couple of other quick uh, restart platforms. We've got a Scrum here. Uh, New Zealand, can't really see it, but behind behind the back of the Scrum, players are, are moving. This is the one thing you learn, you know, and, you, and you're trying to coach. Show one picture, and then a late movement might be able to uh, throw off the defence. And New Zealand do a really good job of loading two on one here, or three on three on two, sorry, with a halfback, a late player that swung around, and then the winger. So we've got three against one, two. And because of that overlap, they're able to draw, fix, make a lot of a lot of field position, a lot of meters downfield. And then from there they can play because England is still trying to come back on side, reloading defense. And so they started there in New Zealand, got all the way down to the 22. A little bit different platform here. Uh, England obviously uh, rate their scrum. They're going to try and do things in the scrum to get position their way. And obviously they've worked it to a position where they can make New Zealand do something they don't want to do, and whether it was a short arm bind or, you know, Punipola has just got his edge on his man, and New Zealand's gone down. Um, and that's position for position for England. That you know, strength of their game was a line out. So obviously they put the ball downfield, and then they're in a great attacking setup. And, and you know, we looked at obviously the attacking setup from a line out that uh, England put together. Um, but also, you know. You can, obviously, part of your strategy should be to work on some uh, analysis of the opposition if you've got time, if you've got the facilities. And England do a job here of uh, working out some what New Zealand is doing. Uh, Courtney Law steal. So they contest the position back to England. Now they can put the ball further downfield, maybe get out of trouble. Courtney Law's that unit, that mini unit of three guys, lifters with the jumper. You know, so they've done a lot of work on New Zealand's lineup, and then New Zealand on the flip side do the same thing: pressure. There's a way for them to score, game position, contest position, putting pressure on the hooker. And obviously New Zealand now. So just just some some things, like some key takeaways. I think you know, like. So you, as a team, you, you need to know the structures. You need to know uh, the tactics of your team. So, see New Zealand set up, split, split their uh, attack. Oh, they're, they're set up on their kickoff. Uh, New Zealand counter. So, it's communication is a massive key. Within that team structure and the team set up, I, I think you're like what, like the rock saying there. You can know your role. Everyone within that team structure and team set up, they've all got a job to play. We saw. On why not going up, La La La, Vitalik, they've got jobs to do. And then with uh, Chez and Colby down here, number three, I think, you know, executing, you know, executing your role, doing it well, um, is probably, you know, a key takeaway. Uh, yeah, and that's, you know, we come to the tactics, see that split set up, see New Zealand counter it, game of chess, um, game position, contest position. And I think, yeah, and then, and then we look at, you know, technical aspects of it, you know, England had a good scrum, good scrum set up in this game. You know, you, you're working with your players to, to, to be proficient, efficient. Whether it's, you know, for scrum work, you're doing, using your tower power, um, work on uh, kickoff. You know, your kickers are always working on their height and depth um, to give you a chance to contest that kickoff and their line outs. Um, you know, uh, or, or the sort of catching the pod situations, you know, that little mini group, mini unit working together. Um, and then we take that into sort of phase play, which is sort of when, when kicks have been put down and you're now looking at your kick strategy, um, getting ball from kick, you know, uh, kick returns, or if someone just drops the ball, there's errors, or good defense and there's a turnover. You know, we'll go really quickly into this, this really short video. Bit of a kicking duel with New Zealand and England in this game. Give position away, England give position back. And then um, you know, there's a lot of space there for New Zealand to attack, but Barrett decides to go to the air, and England can really clear up pretty simply there. 
Um, and then this last clip, pressure on the New Zealand kicker, gives the possession away. Uh, I think it's Slade gets onto the ball. Really good attacking platform now. And then just a really good turnover from Savia. So what do New Zealand do? Now they're back into position. Okay, what's our policy? What's our strategy? React, reload, quick. Probably not as efficient as they want. And because of that, people stand in other people's way and there's errors, and there's mistakes. So yeah, I'll, I'll stop it there, Nate. And if there's any any questions, um, hopefully that um, that's a good start to in terms of that first principle, which was you know game position, contest position. Nate. Sorry, sorry now, I can't hear you, sorry. That's my fault, that's my fault, my apologies. Uh, sorry, Henry, yes, so it was uh, some questions around skill implementation in order to ensure that your uh, strategy can take hold, whether it's on attack or or when it comes to the gaining possession and that kind of thing. And so is it more important as a coach to work on some of those skills on the ball or, or off the ball, do you think, in the big picture? Sorry, now I missed you. So it's a long-winded question, please. Sorry. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So basically, skills. Um, when you're looking at individual skill development, are you looking more at on-the-ball skills or off-the-ball skills? Well, I think um, you know your your technique in passing, probably on the ball. Um, working on um, first some fundamentals. You know, you've got your grip right. All those, you know, all the simple things right. Um, and then we we progress that into uh, putting those skills under pressure. Um, but we look at a lot of skill sets, you know, there's, there's um, the, the progression of a skill, you know, the, the pass is, is depends probably what age group you're starting with. Um, but we want to make things uh, really simple. Um, so, you know, train, training, obviously we, you've got a time constraint. So um, we we're hoping that a lot of players working on that, you know, catch and pass um, on their own uh, with their friends, with their, you know, family um, and with teammates a lot as well you know so in, in our environment there's a lot of expectation on the guys to get into training early before to work on some simple uh, catch and pass drills um, you know really really good uh, webinar by John Tate you know, and, um, and he really handles home the you know the issue around you know catch and pass being able to do that fundamental one that one fundamental skill really well and he's got a lot of good drills and, um, mm -hmm. and training methods on that but I think being on the ball is really important, um, but as, as we go through this uh, webinar, you'll see that you know being able to reload, be in position with depth, um, angles of running uh, also, also help you, um, and how that pass can help you go forward. 100%. I'll let you uh, keep going, knowing we want to get through some, so um, we'll we'll try and get through as much of this as we can by the end. Sure. Yeah, we'll go straight into go forward. Um, you know, and, and what are the big keys that are going forward? You know, uh, you got that ball carrier. You know, what are his skills? You know, what's his skill set? Uh, you know, is it a big, strong carry like we saw with Tualangi, or is it you know quick feet evasion uh, like uh, we have with um, Chiz and Colby? Um, are you able to bring players in and then use the pass to to go forward, put other people through the space? Um, okay. So. Um, and also, you know, we have that sort of pod set up. Uh, is that pod going to help us go forward? And obviously we have the kick pass or and then the kick downfield that can get us going forward. Uh, a couple of other options we can. We can you know, use, a, uh, use a more. We can set up a more than midfield. We can use it from a line out. And then uh, that little little pod pick and go aspect down the bottom. All things, that, all tools in our toolbox to get us going forward. Many units. Um, and then big unit skills out of scrum and line uh, scrum and lineup. Uh, yeah, and obviously catching off catching off the catching off the restart, maybe setting up that mall again. Um, and then a unit skill with our counter attack, another way of going forward. Um, and then an individual within that counter attack, um, but you know with the boys around him in support. 
Yeah, and obviously uh, kick that kick, uh, kick kick strategy to try and gain territory, apply pressure, and then get the ball back. Um, and that, yeah, that sort of brings me to you know what our toolbox looks like. Um, I, like I said, I don't really want to go too deep into what you know um, a loop play or a switch or all the little specific things. I think that's the really interesting and great part of coaching is that you get to invent and make and be innovative or, or you know see things that you've liked, um, introduce them with your team, and if you know your your team members and your athletes um, agree. Uh, you collaborate together and you work out, you know, what does your playbook look like? Start a place, you know, that's the fun part of coaching and being a player. Um, you know, it's obviously the tricky thing. If you have a, a an endless playbook of moves, um, you might get uh, sort of stuck in, and get confused by that. So probably say keep it simple, um, but definitely have some sort of counter-attacking ploys, uh, turnover transition moves, you know, really important. I mean, I'll touch just briefly, uh, quickly on um, what I'm going to talk about, linear attack and, and lateral attack. So linear, obviously, downfield, and we get downfield by defences in our face, we've got to kick downfield. Defences are broken, like we saw the British Irish Lions. We can counterattack and use our footwork and skills to get downfield. Um, line out, we've got to line out, and, and we decide to maul downfield, right? Um, then we look at our lateral, looking at our channels. We can get across the field um, using pods, using using maybe one pass and a run, using power, using evasion. Um, and, and then what does that look like? Uh, again, I don't, cause, because there's various um, options here. And I, and I think um, David Butcher did a really good webinar, again, uh, looking at the um, attack sort of breakdown and, and people's roles in that. So I think you, you, know, you definitely get a lot out of that uh, webinar. It's a great webinar. Um, so I'll just put a couple of things here. You know, you might have a lead runner. There's a lot of this actually in what England do and, and what New Zealand do and what a lot of teams around the world do. Um, lead runner, inside uh, support, outside support, and, and maybe a, a back of the back of that. Um, and it looks kind of like that diamond shape, that square shape. And, and obviously it can look a little bit different. Um, you, you can have, obviously, instead of it being a diamond shape, could look more flat. Um, there's ways of bringing that shape and bringing that go forward. Um, it could be two guys because you've set up a different strategy and policy and tactic. But generally, you're probably going to get that sort of type of shape. You want a ball carry with someone to support them if we get into contact. And you're obviously looking at lateral attack. We, we have that line out there. And you can go straight across the park, get into your hands of your winger. Um, and same with the scrums. You know, you can attack off a base of a scrum like we saw with New Zealand, load it up uh, an extra number, and, and we're able to make good yards down the field, good meters. Um, and I'll touch briefly on what platforms are, what I think platforms are. Um, obviously, I'm not going to talk about all the moves you, that can come off a, a set piece, but I will uh, look at what, a, what one of the successes that England went through. Uh, but you obviously have your scrum, your line out, your kick restarts. That's a platform you can set. So, you, so what um, New Zealand did, retail, uh, what lock called the ball, that's a platform now. New Zealand could have run it. But Aaron Smith decided to kick it, and Sever Reese was on the chase. Maybe he could have won the ball back. Um, transition platform is when you do get that kick, you receive the kick, you've been tackled right there and then, and able to get back into the game and, and start to now flip that uh, that attack principle our way from defence to attack. Right now, do you have some sort of transition play in mind? Quarter from the kickoff, all right. New Zealand's call there was to put it downfield. Um, another call in your toolbox could be, all right, we're going to flash it, go wide, see if we can catch uh, England with poor chase. Um, and, and obviously those things happen on a turnover. Um, you can maul it and then flash off a maul um, and then and obviously breakdowns. Breakdown to breakdown, what are we doing off our breakdowns? I'm going to have a little quick, uh, quick look at some of these. Um, Skills, skill sets for go forward. So we've got some power here by Tuolangi. Carries, guys over the top to produce quick ball. Curry come around the corner next. Power. Yeah, so we've had two two phases. I just want to emphasize there that they did go forward, uh, but they didn't actually get over the game line, those two carries. 
but you know sometimes is it setting up for something else so you've got two carries New Zealand have to put men on to allow you the big big ball carrier uh, carry around the corner again you know New Zealand look quite tight around that breakdown we can see around here so was that a setup for this next play which is obviously daily making a line break going forward spectacularly offload and then they've got really good foot. So I just want to briefly what I want to say here is it looks like Daly's just got the ball on an outline. He's gone on an arc and he's beating Mwanga. Oh. Sorry, excuse me. So we look at that line pass outline from Daly. But actually if you go back and this is some of the things that we can we can maybe think about when we're coaching. Daly's line is actually square. So he holds Moanga first, then he goes out, then he goes around. And this is some of the you know Daly's probably not even thinking what he does, but you know it's a, it's a good one of these good attacking poise that, that you think about as a coach. Um, some of the things you're working on the in a way straight square. You know, so it took a lot. You know, Monga's a good defender, great defender. Uh, but daily speed and, and use of that evasion, those skills, uh, was able to get him through. The Maul here uh, from England, a really good weapon to go forward. Um, you know, the pillars either side of Atoje do their job really well, and they're able to shift and share in New Zealand, come through. Um, it looks like dead set try um, when it play, the, play it on, extend it on. Young out the back really quickly uh, and a great weapon if, you, if that's part of your strength. Uh, it does show that if we do look at it, uh, England do, uh, really does it, uh, read or italic, do a really good job of getting the hands in. So it actually goes forward. So it's not a try, but again, the, the maul is a weapon. Uh, the kick pass. You know, New Zealand, Barrett, really good exponent of this, Mwanga. Bridge with a really great catch to win position, and New Zealand straight onto attack. You know, the good thing about you know, the class from England, sorry, to absorb. So we look at that scene now. They're weighing it up, New Zealand. He sees space. He sees a man out there. I think it's Anton Leonard Brown. But fair play to England. This battle, contest position, defended really well. So using the kick pass to get forward by quality defense. Um, what else we got? Oh, really like this. We've got a, a pass to go forward. So Sinclair. Some go forward from England. Sinclair gets on the ball, looks at the decoy runner, straight through a hole. And, you know, we take it back through frames. Uh, Sinclair uses that man. Curry comes on a out sort of straight to in line, brings Whitelock in, does run around the back of him, um, but he's done a good job in bringing Whitelock out of his comfort defense. Um, and Whitelock sort of goes, Phew. luckily, Sinclair's run around the back. But a really good job from Sinclair to draw the next man, which is Lalala, La La, who doesn't, that's not really his man, but because of Whitelock going in, Sinclair's going in. So it's just a good job of, you know, using the pass and good angle lines of running. Cody Taylor uh, or Savio is just sort of a no man's land down a way to go. Henry, I don't know. I don't know who was lucky out of that one, but uh, <laughs> yeah. um, mate, we're we're about quarter two. I know you still have quite a bit you want to get to. Is there maybe things you want to just really make make sure we highlight over the next ten minutes um, from from what you have, and then we can make sure we get to some of the questions. Yeah, sure. I'll go quickly on to um, kind of the, the, the tactics sort of view of things, uh, tactical view. So we're going to look at that, try quickly um, from England, go through it quickly. Got, uh, obviously, two lungy carries. Um, and this is one of so. It's one of the things I can break down, and, and it's obviously one of the things we use in our in our toolbox. Um, and attack coaches sort of like these three three set phase moves 
um, off, a, off a strike play, um, off a, a line-out platform, scrum platform, putting things into threes. Um, so here we know, the, the team knows, or England knows that um, Tolong is going to carry. Farrell knows his job, and Underhill knows his job from the line -out. So they come and clear it out really quickly, right? Then you look at New Zealand trying to reload in defence, England trying to reload in attack. So the, those players know exactly what they're doing there, coming around. What I want to highlight is um, little roles in between the big picture. Big picture is three set, three three phases, and England know what they're doing. Tuolangi carries um, Farrell and Underhill. Around the corner comes Curry, and he knows that Vunipol and Atoja is with him. But you have a look at some of the little smaller things, smaller details. Farrell here. Good he's got involved in the tackle, but Farrell does a job of trying to pin him, so he can't reload in defence. And then use him to actually, as New Zealand are trying to reload. Sorry. Yeah, as, as New Zealand are trying to reload, Farrell actually uses Good Hugh uh, to try and stop New Zealand's reload and make it an easier job for Curry and Willie Polar and Atoje to get go forward. The small little details are within each of the big things. You know, it's smart from Farrell to try and do that. It doesn't work on this occasion. Um, we take that clip a little bit further on. They exactly again, they know exactly what they're doing. Uh, I would just say, sorry, I'm, just one little aspect here. I'm just a bit worried about forward here. Ford's got a job maybe to come on the outside of uh, Curry to try and attract Cody Taylor, who's a, a, the New Zealand player in yellow. Ford seems to bail out a little bit, leaves, and that gives a chance for Cody Taylor just to drift out and defend. It's a small thing. Farrell's done a really good thing, small thing, but could have been really big. He's got in the way, tried to stop New Zealand's slide. Ford could have influenced the defence by coming up with Curry, maybe. But as you see later on, Ford gets in a position to put the pass out in front of Daly, and Daly does the magic. So, so just really quickly, England has seen that they could kick into that linear position. They don't. They decide to see that pitch up on New Zealand. They try to take them on out wide. They use what I call it here a rooster, a lateral play. Line out, win the line out first. Second play, 12 carries. 13 and 6 on the breakdown. 13, obviously, Farrell does a job of trying to stop New Zealand's slide. Next phase, Curry's around the corner. They all know what they're doing, all set up, all pre-programmed. And then after that phase, if they get quick ball out to Farrell, he gets a chance to get uh, Elliot Daly on a one-on-one -on -one with Moonga. And you saw the effect. Yeah, and, and then we'll take it into the support. So I can go through these really quickly. How are we doing for time? Yeah, we're about 10 minutes to go, uh, uh, Henry. So, I mean, if you want to fly through just the basics of, of how you use these principles in, in attack, and then we can try and address a qu couple of quick questions, that'd be great. Yeah, sure. So, yeah, I really wanted to sort of hone in on a couple of those things around that, that attack, um, mm -hmm. uh, those two aspects, uh, that game position, and, and obviously um, go forward. Um, these are all, they're all really important. They're all interlinked and they're, they're massive pieces of the puzzle. But we can get through these pretty quickly if we look at support, um, you know, individually, uh, what, are our, what are we doing as a ball carrier and as teammates? You know, one of the big things is, is width. How can our width help our ball carrier and our depth and then our lines of running? So we see in red, you know, bring, being a little bit wider makes our defense maybe hang out a little bit wider with us. If we're deeper, we can come on with pace. And those changes of angles, like we saw with Sinclair and Curry, when uh, Sinclair was able to draw in white lock and then put away Underhill. Uh, and then obviously in support, if we do go into tackle, really big job in trying to win that race to the breakdown and clear and bridge. Uh, you don't need to see the video. We can go into continuity really quickly. Um, this is what you know is what's happening at the breakdown once we're being tackled. Um, you know, how can we keep the ball moving? Um, do we have to create a ruck to create separation and 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 then give us some time and space to get back into our uh, you know our individual skill work, our, our you know our evasion skills and 
get our support back with us. So we look at um, here we've got a sort of pod set up. In the second picture, we've got Ireland versus uh, Scotland. Uh, they're using a, a more uh, to try and keep continuity. So again, breakdown really important. You know, being able to you know, clear and bridge, keep possession, keep the ball. And then we've got a really quick, uh, quick video here. New Zealand make an error. And get the ball back really quickly, play wide, and then England use pod system. Three guys there, get the ball a little bit wider. Then they come back on a piston. Big carrier with men knowing their roles to win that ball, keep continuity. England set up again, getting numbers in. A little bit of a slower play, but are they setting up for the the money ball, the money play, pick and go, continuity, keeping the ball, men knowing what they're doing to support. And then as New Zealand set up, that looked like they're in a rush defence because Curry, those guys are set up. Now we've got Tuolangi, so he's in a three with Underhill and, and George. But then the ball goes out the back. And then if we take that forward, what New Zealand were doing, uh, you know, applying pressure to score, really, going from continuity. And I think there's three three P's, position, position, and pace are really important. And obviously, we take it back to that clip of what New Zealand, you know, England are doing. Penetrate, keep in position. They're in good field position now. They get in better field position because New Zealand is scrambling. Look at New Zealand's defense really tight. They use pods. Miss passes to get across the other side of the field. So they're in good field position. A little offload here, support, continuity, applying pressure, pressure, big carry, quick recycle, more pressure from Courtney Laws as we've seen, and they give the chance for Tuolangi to score. So obviously New Zealand, you know, they're, England are trying to manipulate New Zealand's defence. Henry, just before, and I, I know there's, uh, obviously we can go in through a whole bunch of stuff and, and I'll let you get to your summary in a sec, but there's a really great question about that phase play that you were talking about going into the daily move. Um, so when you go off the line out and then you have uh, uh, Tuli. Yeah, Tulangi, they had Farrell and they had Curry. Uh, so the, the question is how much room does a coach give or do you personally give for off the cuff play when you have that structured setup, but you know what? An opportunity actually arose on that second phase as opposed to the pass the daily. How much flexibility do you give players to just run with it then? Oh, I think you know, you, you obviously collaborate with the players and, and um, we, we work on uh, strategies um, around, you know, it's a good question. It's a really good question uh, because I think you've got to allow the players to see and adapt to what they see weigh up the options. Um, and if it meant on that first play with Tuolangi, he, he gets an offload on, it may go out of that, the rooster, I call it a rooster, I'm not sure what England have called it, uh, but that three phase play, if there's an opportunity, um, because you're putting the ball into a, a better position, um, it, it, you probably have to reflect on it later, if Tuolangi offloads the ball to Farrell, who's looking to clear and produce quick ball, if Farrell gets held up and driven backwards, you'd reflect after the game and go, yeah, is it, do you think that was a good decision? I think you have a free reign, personally, um, because, you know, I, I think the game is so, you know, it's, it moves around so much, it's so fluid. Um, but if you've gone into that with a strategy because you, you know or you think, you know, that's what's going to happen, I think you've got to trust in, in your, 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 your team and your team tactics and strategy as well. You know, Tulangi and Farrell and Underhill would have gone through that play probably, you know, more than a dozen times under pressure, probably more pressure than New Zealand put them on. Just for that moment for Tulangi to produce fast ball yeah. so that Curry coming around the corner can produce fast ball with Atoje and, and those uh, Bunipola coming behind, you know. And that's set up so that they can get forward and daily outside Moanga. Now, that would break down if, if Tulangi offloaded. 
you know, our game is so fluid, like I said, it doesn't mean that too long you can't do it That's right. and your players can't do it. But if there's a, if there's a reason why you set up and, and to practice, then you probably want to go through with it and then you can, you can go, oh, no. Actually, uh, money, you should have offloaded there. So, right. yeah, there's a, there's a balance, you know. It's, it's, it's hard to say because it worked such a treat there. One, two, three, boom, boom, boom. Daily outside Moana, you know, his skill sets, you know, in and away. And that's what you want to do, right? On that on that play, scrum play is some of these these moves that you're setting up at training. You know, it's for a practice, it's for sorry, it's for a purpose. You know you your gun winger is, he's got gas. Try and put him in a really good position to use that that strength, you know? And that's what I think maybe the art of coaching. So it transitions really well into this next question. Uh, Henry, that you and I had a conversation leading up to today about the um, the New Zealand attack and how they they seem to not really have an alternate response in some ways. So, w at what point do you, as a coach, feel okay? You know what? We've we've had a tactical plan. It's not working out. Now we need to make some adjustments. When do you see the game needing to see some of those changes? Well, you you leave it for the guys on the field. They're the ones that are they're the boss in the game. You might, you know, you obviously passing messages down. You, you know, you're, you're looking at it from up above. You can see kind of the whole thing. Players sometimes are stuck in that moment. Um, you know, we did have a good discussion about it because obviously New Zealand went into that game with that game plan. Let's keep working at it. Um, but they, yeah, you're right. They, they seem to two lead runners go out the back, another couple of lead runners, and it. They can seem to, to on three or four occasions, I can think off the top of my head, he's blitzing out of the line, he's forcing New Zealand back, or he's actually tackling the man, ball and all. And New Zealand just couldn't, didn't seem to be able to adapt quick enough. And obviously that was their downfall. Such a tight match, two quality, you know, great sides. Um, but England adapted and, and got their analysis right, nailed it. And New Zealand, obviously, in, in, that, in that game, didn't, didn't seem to be able to especially from a sideline, you know, which is probably easier for defence to blitz up and, and get in your face. New Zealand didn't seem to be able to get off that sideline, split the English defence and then find a way of using those decoy runners that they were throwing. So, yeah, good question, but, you know, it's a hard one. It's, it's one of those you're hoping the players see it um, because they're the ones that have to, you know, work yeah. at it in the, in the game. But, yeah, you will pass messages on. New players coming off the bench, subs. We'll, we'll get messages in the air. Hey, yep. it's not working. Get on there. Maybe start from dummy half a couple more times. Maybe maybe make those English uh, guards think a bit more about around the breakdown. Yeah, sure. Okay, great. Um, you have a summary piece, uh, Henry, to just, go through, and then and then yeah, we'll, just wanted to uh, go really quickly. I know I know we're we're times up. Yep. Um, I know we all have. Um, constraints, you know, time in the week, how can I allocate the best time? I think, you know, just sitting down planning helps with those things. And obviously resources, we're not obviously always uh, totally resourced. Just being inventive, finding ways to, um, you're finding some ways to do things, you know, and for me, some considerations, I think, you know, for me, it's all about enjoying the process. You know, I think creating a learning environment, enjoyable, um, you know, when the mind's first, and then I think you know, the, the other stuff to, Physical aspects will be easy, um, and for me, you know, I always like to start with why, why, why am I doing it? What's my motivation? You know, that for me sometimes helps drive my, you know, direction of my coaching. Uh, I think there's got to be a big focus on the core fundamentals. Um, I like to, you know, I can't play a, a really quick game if I don't have really quick team members. So I look to, I look to see what my team's made up of. You know, what the individuals look like. How's their knowledge on some of the team stuff, strengths and work ones. And that, again, might help me guide my direction of my training. And then, you know, technical and tactical stuff needs, you know, constant work on, constant work on seeing that high-level game. You know, under lots of pressure, you know, the fundamentals sometimes, technical skills sometimes break down. And, you know, always think about, you know, fundamentals, see, help the players see, being able to make make good decisions and then, you know, execute. So, you know, like, again, I look back at John Tate's, um, Jamie's, uh, you know, John was talking about catch and pass. You know, a skill that we need to just keep up skilling all the time. And Jamie was about, you know, good planning and you know, defensive principles and keeping simple. I really like that message. Um, and obviously, Dave Butcher he was talking about um, you know, some of the 
to break down skills and, and skill sets you need. Um, yeah, I mean, I can send this slide out to people um, and, and obviously we can go offline and talk about some of these things. Um, yeah. Not a problem. Yeah, I mean, there's tons of questions, mate. We're not going to get to them all tonight. But uh, first of all, I want to say thank you. There's uh, a couple of things I'd like to address to the group. One is um, that all previous webinars are up on Rugby Canada's YouTube page under the 2020 uh, webinar playlist. Please feel free to go back. And uh, this one here with Henry will be up tomorrow for those who showed up late or need some more information. Um, the NCCP number is being used um, when you fill in your registration onto the webinar. We are going to be using these webinars as uh, professional development points towards your coaching certification, so that'll be available. If you have any questions around any of these pieces, please reply to the email uh, from the registration so that you can uh, get in touch with Henry. We'll be sure to forward information uh, or questions that you have for him, uh, i.e. around the slide deck and all of the other technical and tactical bits and pieces that um, uh, Henry was going over today. By the way, a couple of quick things around the NCCP number. If you have not been able to, to uh, insert it, please, again, like I said, reply to the registration uh, information link there, and then we can make sure we add it after the fact. So opportunities there for for you to get your PD points. One last reminder, of course, we're still under rugby suspension. Uh, rugby Canada will have an update coming very shortly um, over the next little bit. We are, like everyone else, looking forward to getting back on the field. However, at the moment, all provincial and domestic rugby is still under suspension, suspension so just be aware of that. And then finally, a last little bit to plug for next week, we have Francois Rattier, who's going to come and do an English version of his uh, presentation on team culture and his World Cup experience in 2014 and 2017 with the national senior women's team. So thank you very much for everyone's time. I know we tried to get as much in as we could, and uh, I know Henry will be happy to address any questions that anyone has afterwards. So Henry, over to you for the last word. Yeah, well, I'd just like to thank everyone you know, for, for surviving um, that webinar. It's such a broad, you know, principles of attack, such a broad uh, subject. You know, we could go spend an hour just talking about the pass from the deck, you know, scooting from dummy half um, out of the boot. So um, please, yeah, uh, uh, reach out off offline and uh, I'll try my best to get back and reply to any questions, any detail. Um, sorry it was so broad um, and I probably labored on a couple of points. Um, excuse me about that, but yeah, like I said, it's a really exciting attack. You know, I love that part of the game. Um, and, uh, you know, I think, you, you know, we can grow some, you know, we can grow our attack for Canada and you know, it's one of the big, work on for us in, in the sevens um, with, the, with the amount of threats that we have and, and good attacking players. So um, please take care and be careful um, and thank you for your time. Excellent. Thank you very much, Henry. Have a good night, everybody.